block between these two sets of religious leaders, according to the Supreme Islamic Council, must be broken if there is to be any chance for the growth of a unified Islamic Ummah. They therefore employed the three-pronged approaches of dialogue, discussions, and intellectual debates to achieve this objective. The first four days of the tour took the Supreme Islamic Council delegation to different villages in the North Bank and Central River regions. In Kerouan, where proceedings began, Governor Edward II pledged his region's support to the Council, suggesting that with the necessary logistics and communication facilities, activities of the Council will gain prominence in NBR. The President of the Council, Muhammad Lamin Ture, challenged Muslims to cultivate and nurture the idea that the Gambia Supreme Islamic Council belongs entirely to them. He added that the executive committee, headed by himself as the president, is only a body of trustees tasked with the huge and sensitive duty of steering the affairs of Muslims. He went on to say that all the decisions made on the council follow extensive research by a 50-member committee of planet scholars. Imam Ture believes such an explanation is enough to what he called the unwarranted and baseless division perpetrated by people who ironically took part in the Congress that elected them into office. He told the Guardian that news of the moon being seen in any Muslim country as obtained from the holy books is enough a justification for the Muslim world to either begin fasting or celebrate feast. Similar words of wisdom came from Sheikh Ibrahim Jeju and Dr. Mbai Kebaka, who made it crystal clear that the council cannot afford to mislead Muslims as they are not paid a pittance for their services. But contrary to a widely held belief, they have to depend on the generosity of the president and their own monthly contributions to keep the council operational. Various speakers representing the locals took turns to express their gratitude for the opportunity, describing it as long overdue. They added that with periodic dialogue and sensitization forums of this nature, problems that usually mar Islamic feast will soon be consigned to history. Following the opening ceremony in Karawan, the Supreme Islamic Council delegation went on out in Stundugu Kebe, Sambakala, Darussalam, Salikanye, Mintakunda, Daruridwan, and the upper Badibu town of Farafenye, where they held fruitful discussions with religious leaders, scholars, and local authorities. In CRR, meetings started in Janjamburi. This tour of the Gambia Supreme Islamic Council has been organized in a way that it targets scholars, heads of madrasas, and others who have become renowned in Islam in all over the country. A meeting has just been held at the governor's residence in Janjamburi. The delegation is now heading to different communities in this region to sensitize them on matters related to the work of the council. During ensuing discussions in Kaur and Brikamaba, Dr. Mbai Kebaka, the Supreme Islamic Council Secretary, told the gathering that the council is open to divergent views and dissenting opinion, but this, he added, should be sorted with council members behind closed doors in order to uphold unity in Islam. From the North Bank region to the Central River region, meetings were not devoid of arguments, for one thing is clear, the mission to make people abandon deep-rooted practices the authenticity of which sometimes beg for answers is undoubtedly an uphill task. Modula Min Sise, GRTS. The Women's Bureau and the United Nations Fund for Population Affairs have been training some women leaders on gender mainstreaming. The forum attracted participants from across the Gambia with a view to improving the knowledge of women leaders on sensitive gender and women empowerment issues. Abu Kardabo has more that drew over 100 women participants from far and near is one of a series conducted by the Women's Bureau to refresh and update women leaders on their responsibilities as women's representatives as well as how to impart vital information concerning women's advancement to their people. At a time when the government has carved in it for itself in the areas of women empowerment and promoting gender equality, this forum for the Women's Bureau Supremo is creating the space to prepare Gambian women for the challenges ahead. We feel it is important to bring these women leaders build their capacity to know better what is expected of them so that they're able to better represent the, the women to contribute towards reducing the, 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 the gap between um, men and women in terms of um, participation, in terms of um, economic um, activities, in terms of education, in the area of um, health, and, and what is whatever you know um, is expected of a human being to really um, engage in to better their lives. The National Women's Federation, according to Madame Fai Hydra, is one structure through which women leaders could filter down strategies of mainstreaming gender issues to the grassroots. Fatima Daja, president of the Gambia Women's Federation, and Ajande Jada, the West Coast Region Women Mobilizer, all spoke on the giant strides taken by government in women empowerment 
saying the honors of ensuring that the desired results of gender equality are achieved to a large extent rests on the women themselves. Honorable Hadinian Jain of Jeswang believes for this to happen, there must be a united front in pursuit of their objectives and utilize the knowledge gained from the workshop to build on their achievements. It is in unity that we can build our strength. The overall objective of this workshop is to enhance the understanding of women on gender issues, also to build up the solidarity of women to stand together as one body, as one voice to help move this country forward. Because we already have the enabling environment, the political will is there. Having witnessed the opening ceremony of the two-day training workshop, participants like Ramutlai Haidara have no doubt about the potentials of this training. If we have such forums whereby the leadership would be uh, enlightened, they would be uh, upgraded, and then their capacity is added to, then Gambia would be a wonderful model. Already we are in the South region, but we'll be more. It is only two days before these women leaders will finally return to their respective constituencies to take charge of their various responsibilities. But what organizers of this session are keenly looking forward to is how best will participants transmit the knowledge land back to their people anytime they trek back home. Abu Bakr Dabo, GRTS. Preparations for the hosting of the American Initiated Africa Endeavor Test Exercise are in high gear as participants from over 40 countries arrive in Banjul for the 10 day event. The Grand Convergence seeks to test the military communication equipment of the countries involved and harmonize their utility for future support to Africa's standby forces operations. Momo Jalo has more on that. This American military personnel are the final touches to the planned military exercise, duped Africa Endeavour test exercise spearheaded by APICOM in partnership with the African Union. The test exercise brings together participants from over 40 countries who spent 10 days at the Gambia Armed Forces Training School to hone up their military communication skills. Lieutenant Colonel Todd Hanna of the U.S. Air Force is head of the advanced team busy setting up the stage for the plant exercise. Well, the exercise is broken into two phases. Uh, and the first phase will be technical training. Uh, all of the countries will bring delegates and uh, we will be offering them some technical training on a variety of communications topics, everything from high frequency radio to computer networks uh, and just a variety of communications technologies. As the training exercise progresses, the second phase will be more complicated as it will involve command post exercises with participants split up into four regional groups. The command post exercise uh, centers around passing command and control messages up and down the echelons of command. And then we are also taking the opportunity to do actual communications with uh, the Western region in ECOWAS and the AU headquarters in Addis Ababa. In a continent plagued by a humanitarian crisis caused by wars and natural disasters, such an exercise, organizers argue, will only be of utmost benefit. It brings uh, the interoperability has a human side too, because it brings along uh, pe it brings people together. Then we'll be able to know each other. We'll be able to build uh, friendships. We'll be able to um, establish uh, contacts and uh, be able to even communicate with it, with each other even after the exercise. And when you join nations together, you want them to be able to communicate uh, both. Uh, in a technical sense and in a human sense, if you will. And so this exercise provides that platform for those nations to get together and to practice their communication and to hone their procedures uh, and ensure that the technical interoperability is also sound. For the Gambia Armed Forces, this exercise will not only improve skills, but also enable them to showcase the country to the more than 280 participants who would descend on the Gambia. So this is a big test and a big challenge for the Gambia. Additionally, it helps us also to show the hospitality of the Gambia, to show our country to our African friends and, and brothers, and as well uh, to, for us also to be able to uh, uh, enhance our economy. The exercise will kick off on Monday, July 11th at the July 22nd Square, where the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Gambia Armed Forces is expected to grace the occasion. The general public is also cordially invited to the opening ceremony. It will be characterized by a march pass, roll call of participating countries, and speeches by dignitaries. Omar Dijalo, GRTS. You can also follow that story and other GRTS programs live on our website at www.grts.gm. 
there you can also monitor GRTS Radio Live. From there we take our first break, we'll be right back. 